69. Fishing the DMV is on its way to its next major milestone of 200 Patreon supporters. We are only 69 Patreon supporters away on achieving this next major milestone and getting us ever more closer to starting a nonprofit. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait, all Patreon members will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, 10% off their orders to Tiger Crankbaits, 10% off their orders to Catoctin Creek Custom Rods. They'll be a part of the private Facebook group community that's growing at leaps and bounds every single week. Members only content like that big seminar we did last week on how to fish tidal rivers and of course weekly Patreon giveaways. For more information, click the link down below or check it up right above my head here. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and today we have a really special guest. Uh, the first NV KVA bent of the year. It was postponed because the weather has absolutely been dog shit this year. It feels like every weekend it is blowing 30 miles an hour and raining. Uh, the weekend before this was uh, recorded, I went down to Lake Anna for a two-day event, and that it blew 20 miles an hour each day, and then like... 18 in practice it was miserable i am waiting for the first weekend where it doesn't suck uh and hopefully it might be this coming weekend uh for the potomac one but who knows anyway regardless brandon how you doing tonight doing good dude yeah like again thank you so much for coming on the show and before we get into the tournament like how did you get into kayak fishing um i've all i was always more of a hunter until probably seven years ago then I got my first kayak and I've been hooked ever since. It's a guy I was working with. We started talking about bass fishing and um, we both got kayaks. We both started fishing probably every weekend and um, just been slowly growing from there. What type of kayak are you running? I have a native Slayer Max now. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, I had a three waters before this one. It was a good starter kayak, but. I eventually wanted more. I wanted. I went with the pedal drive this time, so um, I like that a lot better. Are you running electronics or a motor or anything like that yet? Yes, yeah, so I run a just a small Garmin Striker Four uh, Graph, and then I went with a Newport uh, trolling motor this year. That would have been clutch as we kind of get into the weather that you guys were dealing with for Lake Anna. Um, yes. Was, was this your first year fishing with the club? No, so twenty twenty one was I think, and then I didn't do very good. Twenty twenty two, I didn't fish a whole season with them, and then last year I didn't fish with them at all. I fished just some random tournaments throughout the year, and then this year I decided to come back. What made you come back? Um, feeling a little more confident with how my fishing game's going. Um, a little more confident with how knowing that I can figure out how to fish certain um, bodies of water that they go to now. And uh, I just didn't have that before. So what made the confidence go up? I mean, it sounds like you went on like a sabbatical to find yourself, so to speak for a year. Uh, Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I caught a lot of big bass last year and it, I guess it just helped boost my confidence. Um, I did well in a lot of, or a couple of events. I fished with, um, the Bass Cast Club last year got second in their opening tournament, and then I went to Smith Mountain Lake for the Virginia uh, Bass Tournament that they had, and never fished Smith Mountain Lake before in my life, and got fourth in that one. So, wow. it, uh, yeah. Where are you located then? Because Smith is kind of a haul from Northern Virginia. I'm uh, in Mount Jackson, which is gotcha. halfway between Harrisonburg and Winchester. Dang. Okay. What is your home water then? Um, I have Lake Laura, which is pretty close. It's probably 20, 25 minutes. It's not a big lake. Uh, lake Arrowhead's pretty close. It's not a big lake either. We don't have any big bodies of water close. Um, we spend a lot of time on the Shenandoah River, though. South Fork? Uh, South Fork and North Fork. Yeah, I know last year the 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 well both forks honestly were just shallow as hell because it was like it felt like we were in a drought for like four or five months. It was insane. Yep. yep. Uh go over to Egypt bends a lot. That's probably that's, 
Yeah. I want to go there someday. I've not been to Egypt Bend before. I sound like it's just a it's a small portion of the river that's dammed up. Like is it like Riverton? Uh yeah, pretty much. It's I don't know how like big the stretch is for sure, but you can run big boats there and stuff too. So it's uh, average like nine, ten foot deep. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. What with these places that you fished, how much of that really helped like evolved your style for this year that you kind of went on the sabbatical to improve your game. Is it that you just fished around those places too? Is it, was there any big thing that can stick out to you? Like this gave me the confidence. Um, I have, I've had a friend of mine. He's always told me, you just got to have confidence in what you throw. And I never understood that really until last year when I started catching fish on stuff. And then the more I fished with it, I just, my confidence grew in those baits. So, I guess this year I have this feeling that it doesn't matter where I go. If I throw those couple baits, I have this feeling that I'll just catch fish then. How much did you fish the, the places on the schedule for 2024? Um, I pre-fished Anna one time this year, and I've never had any luck on Anna. And when we pre-fished, we had amazing luck. Um, the Potomac, I didn't get a chance to pre-fish that any. Um, the Shenandoah river, we go there quite a bit. So that one, I've always had kind of a good confidence there anyway. And then a couple of the other, like the five lake places we've been a couple of times to figure it out and, you know, help myself out a little bit. So you weren't spending a whole lot of time on a lot of these bodies of water last year, getting yourself no, ready for the season. No, I didn't last year. Well, it, I mean, it sounds like you really went into this year fresh. So, I mean, let's let's kind of get into like the the before times, the, the pre tournament stuff. Uh, Lake Anna is on the schedule. It gets rescheduled because of the weather. And if people don't know, it was a two day event. Pick a day, and you could go uh, Saturday, Sunday. How did that shape up with the rescheduling and practice and everything? So I didn't get to pre fish a second time. So I was just going based off what was the first time when we went up and I just went for it and hoped that maybe the first day everybody was going to be scared because of the, it was windy that day too. Um, hoping I would be the only one there maybe and less pressure and maybe the wind would have them biting more before the next day when it just calmed down completely. Um, and I mean, it seemed to work. So it was, I told the guys at NBKBA that was the best day I've ever had on Lake Anna. When you look at the lake, there's really three sections of it. You have above the splits, you have from the splits really to like the bridge, maybe a little bit below that. Um, and then you have like from Contrary Creek down, depending on how you want to dissect the three sections. You do have a motor now, which is good because otherwise your calves would be screaming for how much you'd be yeah. pedaling up and down this place. Yeah. Did you decide to put in it all three sections in practice to try them all out? Or did you close your eyes and just threw a dart at a board? No. So, um, the first two years I fished with the club, we put in the first year I put in at the, um, the state park and I didn't have much luck there and I wasn't really a big fan of the area. And then the second year, um, I'm trying, I can't remember the name of the ramp I put in it the second year, but it was the same thing. Like I didn't really feel uh, confident with the area. And then this year we said, let's go put, it, put in a sturgeon and go out of there and try some coves we found that looked pretty nice on the maps and stuff. And that's just pretty much how we figured out to go there. The year before, were you uh... – Above or below the main bridge? Um, Below, I think. Okay. So one year above the bridge and the next two years below. Yes. Yep. That's really clear water, relatively speaking, especially around Sturgeon Creek. Is that something that you felt like you were you, you preferred versus the dingy, dirtier water? So you were saying that the water was pretty milky during your practice period. And the Saturday I fished the tournament, it was, it wasn't clear, clear that day either. It, it had some color to it. When you look at the big, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Cause if you haven't had a chance to practice again, it is what it is, but you pick sturgeon. 
kayaking is interesting because everyone go like there's certain ramps depending on which body of water you pick where you know people are going to be uh spoiler warning mad a woman will be choked full of kayaks i know shocking like was sturgeon were you thinking like okay there's gonna be a ton of other kayaks launching from sturgeon or did you pretty much have that area to yourself um i think there was two people putting in before i got there and i might have seen maybe a total of four or five kayaks all day in that area um maybe the boat tournament scared a lot of people away because when i was putting in there were 73 boats getting ready to launch too so jesus yeah that would would, would scare me too (laughs) uh but so the calls made tournaments being rescheduled big bummer especially if you feel like you got it pretty dialed when it was rescheduled how did you know like what went into your decision to like pick saturday or sunday um hoping for less pressure because i know a lot of people didn't want to fish saturday because the weather wasn't great saturday either um i think i'm pretty sure the wind was gusting like 30 at times on saturday and it was kind of just a luck too because I was texting my buddy and I'm like, man, what if I'm picking the wrong day and you're picking the right day on Sunday? <laughs> so it was, it was still kind of nerve wracking, hoping that I was picking the right day to go. I mean, that's a big thing too. Like the amount of decisions you have in this, you could definitely give you paralysis. Um, yeah. we, when you got to the ramp Saturday morning though, what, what was your gut telling you? How many people were there? Um, it was, it was just two kayaks putting in and, I was just just gonna go with what I knew and what worked in practice at first, and that worked. And I think I caught my first fish at like twenty minutes after first cast. So, were you staying? Because I know with kayaks and everything, you don't have a two fifty on the back. Were you getting up at like two, like two or three, put in to troll out to your spot outside of Sturgeon, or was it actually in the Sturgeon Creek area? Um, most of it was in the area right there. Okay, so you didn't have too far, too far of a haul to go. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yep. Interesting. With that, lake plays so well for forward facing sonar, insanely good. And I know a lot of people in, in the club I was with, the Antietam Bassmasters. I'm the only one that runs forward facing sonar, and so I was the only one that could get on a consistent bite and practice. And and really, I could have in the tournament if I made better decisions. You aren't running forward-facing sonar. So what was your strategy? Were you just hitting the bank? Were you chasing fish offshore? Um, I found most of them were biting in like the two to five foot range. So I just kept my kayak sitting at like seven, eight foot and would cast over that direction where I knew the water was getting shallow and just dragging most of the day, honestly. What made you decide to drag something versus wind something? Was that a practice decision? So th- I started off the morning throwing a wacky rig and I got just a couple bites, but no like full on takers of it. So then my first fish, I caught off a bandito bug and it was still pretty calm then. And then the wind started picking up. So I tried, you know, all your moving baits, try to crank bait, try to chatter bait, a spinner bait. Uh, swim jig some none of that worked really wow. no Damn. so then i picked my bandito bug back up and just started lighting them up i think i had three fish within like 45 minutes after i picked that back up that is so freaking weird because i think josh reese he killed it on a jig and somebody in my club killed it with a brush hog which is basically a bandito bug type yeah. of deal yep. i i why the hell are they so dialed into that thing? I couldn't figure it out either. Like I, once the wind picked up, I'm like, all right, I got to throw a moving bait and it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. I was throwing a wacky worm in practice and they were doing pretty well with it. And it was only blowing a soft, like 18 miles an hour. But then Saturday came around, it was like 22 and you could see them on the scope. They'd come up to it and then immediately just turn straight away from the stupid wacky rig. And I, <laughs> it was a pain in the ass to figure out how to get them to bite something else at that point. So yeah. I, I feel you with that. It's they're finicky as hell there. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so you get your first one. Yep. Early in the morning. Like, that's got to calm your nerves down. Like, was this a ding? Was this a pretty decent one? Like where, where, 
Um, it was I think like fourteen and a half. Okay, it was a pretty decent one, and um, I caught it right in front of all the other boats sitting there getting ready to launch. So that was pretty. That was a pretty good feeling. <laughs> That's okay. Let's see fifteen. Perfect. Um, how many? How much was the boat pressure an issue? Um, like you just mentioned, you caught it in front of them. Did any of them just like just veer off and? Uh... No, uh, that was bo- like before they launched. I don't think they launched till around seven. Okay. So most of them took off after after that. I think that was at like six fifty. I caught that fish or something like that. Um, the wind picked up. A lot of them started coming back, fishing the cove. Um, it didn't really seem to bother them much. I caught nine total all day which I was pretty happy with. So, When did you catch your second one? Um, it was actually almost an hour later. So, 10? Around, uh, no, probably closer to like 8. Oh, damn. Okay. And then after I caught that one, I caught two more probably within 30 minutes of that one. So you got three by 9.30. Yes. Now, are you going to be uploading that as you go, or are you waiting till the last five minutes of the day? Um, the f- I've had four before I uploaded the first four, and I think that was by like 10 o'clock. Um, none of them were real big, so I wasn't too interested in getting them loaded up too quick because I knew nothing. none of those four were going to win big fish. But four. So you got four. Yeah. Did you check out the leaderboard then? Yes. Yes, I did. And I, I think, I think those four put me in first at that moment. What's your mind doing? Um, keep it up. (laughs) Just, uh, just keep going on, stay positive. You know, don't try to be too hard on myself. Um, it's working. Just try to get that, just try to get that limit. That's, that's always my main goal. It doesn't matter how big they are. As long as I get a limit. With the four in the box, not knowing how the rest of the day is about to progress. How nerve wracking was that to try to get that fifth, especially you look at the leaderboard, you're like, shit, I actually have a chance to do something here. Yeah. Is it harder to block that out? Um, I think it was the worst part was I kept going back in the cove and I probably didn't have another bite for like an hour and a half then. And that was when the wind was blowing again. So I still, I was like, well, maybe the fish back, Pier want something moving so i went through all the moving baits again in that cove and nothing worked and then i I caught the fifth one coming back out probably halfway through the cove Hmm. what made you make that switch um bandito bug is one of my confidence baits for sure now like if I go anywhere, I feel like I can throw that bait and catch a fish. I, I, with the few tournaments I fish from a kayak, the one thing it teaches you is you have to kind of more sit in an area, preferably versus when I have a bass boat and I want to just go all over the damn lake. Did you ever think about just leaving the cove and trying a bunch of other places? Like, or, or was it a conscious decision of like, I'm going to stay here? Once I had my fifth... When when we practice in there, there was quite a few big bass caught. So I knew they were in there somewhere. So once I had the fifth, I'm like, I just need to grind it out the rest of the day and just hope that I can come across one. And what happened? Um, at one forty five I caught a twenty and three quarter. Mm. So I was 20, I think they said 23 minutes away from having big fish too. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. Same cove. Yeah. Yep. I found a little pocket that didn't have any wind in it in that cove and she was in that pocket. That's insane. I can't believe you stayed in that hole. Like that's just, that's really good patience and it shows really good just for like, forethought to be like this is the area i have to stay in and even though the bite's not on right now i need to stay in here i mean were were you just 
putting the kayak up, up against the, the shore and just making the same cast? Or did you like go from one side of the cove and just repeat? So I found a, uh, like a flat and a cove in there that in practice, I found out if I left them alone for a couple hours, it was like they either reloaded or there was a fish that maybe wasn't interested the first time I went through that was interested the second time I went through. So a lot of my, I think probably five of my nine fish all came from the same like area. Hmm. Um, I got lucky. The big one was an area that I didn't really pre-fish. Um, I just got in there cause I wanted to get out of the wind too. Um, uh, See, I caught one off the boat docks right there, and that was just casting. I was up against the bank, tired of pedaling, paddling, stay positioned, and just, I think I made like five casts around there before, and I caught one there too. Dude, I mean, it is, like, it does remind me a little bit of, like, deer hunting in that example of, like, you gotta let the everything calm down in the woods once things, like, the, you gotta let the energy reset, so to speak. And I feel that with shallow water fish, and I'm starting to see it more with offshore fish, too, with four-facing sonar, where you have a school, or you have a really good dock or grass bed, whatever it is, you gotta, like, just sit there sometimes. And this is, like, what I do on the Potomac a lot of times when I'm fishing with a boat, is you got a good area, you just power pull down, you turn the electronics off, and you just, like, let everything, like decompress again, relax, reset, and then make the cast again. Um, yeah. And it sounds like Lake Anna was fishing the exact same way. I know it was Saturday. Um, I don't Sunday. I'm not too sure about, but, uh, I know some of the guys had some pretty good looks, uh, Sunday. Um, it was nerve. That was nerve wracking too. just <laughs> sitting there all day Sunday waiting. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I mean, let's go through that. So you get off the water Saturday. Like, what was your total inches for people at home listening that, that don't know? Uh, I think it was 82 and a quarter, I think. That's pretty good for Lake Anna with the weather conditions that we were dealing with. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably the second most I've ever turned in for a tournament. So I was pretty happy with that, even if I didn't didn't place that gets into Sunday though. Yeah. Are you just turning your phone off and ignoring it? Or are you just basically having your eyes glued to the thing? Um, so Sunday I got up and I went and played golf. Um, and I told my buddies, I'm like, just don't, whatever I do, do not let me look at my phone. Um, I picked it up. I knew they were closing the standings at one 30. I opened them at one twenty to look and see. And then I was like, after that, of course I won't be able to see. So I seen then that I still had the lead, but I knew I caught big fish later in the day after they closed the standing. So I knew anything was possible. Um, MVKBA, they got some hammers that fish in that league anyway too. So my confidence still wasn't too high because I knew there were some guys that could definitely put up some big numbers. It is, you know, and, and not to dilly dally around it, you know, you, you claim your first victory here and yeah, I mean, the Creek that you won out of like no spoilers. I mean, it is routine for bringing up bags. It's more of like a community hole because you have the like in a elite series, winter series that goes out of there all winter long restocking it. it. It just, it really is interesting to me as a student of the sport where you don't always have to go find some Creek 10,000 miles away that no one has heard of just go to where there's always fish. Cause like the weather conditions did suck all weekend and it wasn't right for people to catch 95 inches or anything like that. Yep. Um, just, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just really happy with how it turned out. Um, so what, what's next? Um, trying to get ready for Saturday, uh, down the Potomac. That's another one I've kind of struggled with. So, uh, is, is that the farthest event for you for this whole thing? Um, not, no, it was, it's like two hours to get to Anna and most of the ramps on the Potomac are two hours or just like 10 or 15 minutes more. So 
what are you expecting with that event? I mean, I guess this episode will drop prop. Yeah, the, the, no, this episode will drop after the Potomac. So, uh, are you expecting it to be like a slugfest? Do you think? Like, I mean, yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, I know it's it's been warm, so I'm hoping that you know they're up shallow on beds, whatever they're trying to do. Um, I I look for somebody to be close to ninety, if not ninety, probably. It's, uh, It'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, I know that there's been no tournaments. Pretty, There hasn't been a lot of tournaments on the Potomac this year because of the weather. Shocking. Like the Potomac teams have been canceled. Not a lot of stuff going out of small wood, which usually stocks small wood with a bunch of fish. Um, I know Belmont Bay is going to be loaded with people. Occoquan River is going to be loaded with people. Small wood will probably be loaded with people. Yeah, I, I don't know. Aquia played last year, I think, this time of year, if, I'm not, if my memory serves, which is another dark horse. I, I don't know. I, I think it'll be interesting. The grass will definitely be a thing, because I think in Belmont, there's not as much grass in certain areas. A lot of it's hard cover. There is grass, of course, but it's not like matted, you know, just yeah. wall-to-wall vegetation. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't know what to expect this year with this. It's, it's interesting. But then after that, though, we got smallmouth on the schedule. Yeah. Yep. When will you start pre-fishing for that one? Um, uh, we pretty much got set areas for that. We go every year. Um, so just cause, I, yeah, just we know the area's got big fish in it. So I, I don't think much pre-fishing would be done for that one. The problem I get with that with talking to friends is with the South Fork in particular, especially since this year is just the Shenandoah versus the last couple of years. It's been like three rivers. Yeah. How quickly will that place get blown out from pressure? I guess um, depends on how far, like up this to my way, people will drive to fish it. Um, I put in a river tin a couple years ago for it, and there was quite a few kayaks down that way. Um, once you get past river tin, I don't know much about the Shenandoah. Um, so I don't know. How many of those guys will come up this way to fish it? But it gets a lot of pressure anyway, so I don't think I'm too worried about it. Do you think kayaks actually pressure fish compared to boats? Maybe if they're shallow, because the kayaks can get a lot shallower than the boats, and you're up. Or right, like right on them, and you might get close enough that you could really see them, or actually like reach out and touch them. I guess that's kind of my mindset with it. Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. <laughs> I've, I've always wondered that with kayak fishing. Yeah, I feel like with largemouth i definitely think like they don't they're not as pressured by the kayak i think smallmouth personally they're just skittish by nature especially if it's like if you're in that drought phase we were in and you're kayaking they feel that when there's only six inches of water in that whole damn river system yeah yeah um i think the cicada hatch might play this year for the potomac version the i think the potomac is july i think so there's supposed to be a huge cicada boom this year so i wonder how much that'll play into it because the last time that happened nolan minor won in the susquehanna throwing a stupid little like cicada <laughs> bug thing so i might see that again too yeah that'll be fun i don't know it'd be interesting this year with angler of the year to see how much having two smallmouth events not just one adjust the angler of the year board will there be more smallmouth guys that get pushed to the top yeah yeah um I'm just hoping to uh, get a limit <laughs> every time. Uh, if uh, I always tell my a friend of mine, like I said, if I can get just get five 12 inches every tournament, I would be happy. <laughs> is there an event this year that you feel like that? So example is they last year did the Battle of Five Lakes, and I got to pick Leaders Lake, and I knew if I was half blackout drunk, I could catch a limit. <laughs> that was no problem at all. That was a place I could. Is there a place in the schedule like that this year? You're like, I, the limit shouldn't be the issue. It's if I can get that nice bite. Um, Probably the Shenandoah. I feel like, you know, you can catch relatively 12-inch bass pretty easy, small mouth. Um, 
just finding the pockets that hold the big ones, you know, and getting those big ones to bite. What scares you the most on the schedule? Um, probably the Potomac now. Cause like I said, I've struggled a lot there too. So I'm still kind of, uh, back and forth between two spots that I want to try, um, without pre-fishing. So that scares me a little bit. Um, why, why, why are you scared of it? I guess. <sighs> Cause it's big because I'm I've been to one area that I'm thinking about the other area I haven't been to um I've never had a five fish limit submitted on the Potomac either Ooh, yep that's, that's it, it. Yep. yeah yeah I feel that yeah I, I'm going between Belmont or Pohick um Belmont, because I know there's grass, but I feel like there's going to be 10,000 people in boats. Um, Pohick, I just feel like it's a little bit safe. I don't know. I, I, feel, I don't feel as nervous. Like, I, I get scared. I've always run a, a, a boat on the Potomac. It's my first time fishing out of a kayak on that big ass river. So I always, I'm a little nervous just from like, this is like goddamn ocean we're going out on. And if that wind's blowing, I don't have a motor. I don't want to just like, I don't want to get too much exercise to be honest with you. (laughs) So, but yeah, like I, I don't know it. It'll be interesting. And I'm kind of going in blind for both of them. I think, I mean, it's just the same thing with the Potomac. It's just spots. There's going to be boats around. There's going to be kayaks. You just got to lock down and just fish through it. And hopefully you get your bites. I mean, there's no science rocket to anything Potomac wise. No, it's just, it's not. So Poic's one of them that I've fished there before and I've had a decent amount of luck there, but I've still never had five fish. So, um, and it, it was later summer that I've fished there too. So it wasn't this early. Yeah, the grass didn't come up as well last year as it usually does in Pohick. And I had Chaconis on the show a week ago. We talked about that. The Pohick doesn't have a lot of grass. So it's a lot of hard cover. You have to hit the points, the blinds, the the pads. Yeah. Belmont gives you the grass. Um, I just don't know if we are at that point in the season where they're going to be all in the grass or if there's going to be some fish on hard stuff. Yeah. But then, again, this is the issue with hard stuff on the river. There's only so many, like, cinder blocks and duck blinds so you know it'll be a rotation of you going through them versus if it's a grass bed it's you all just camp down on it and just have at it mm-hmm. yeah um lots of variables yes yes it is uh i've been doing some research so i'm trying to figure out you know some different baits to try and see what happens and Belmont's big. Like, cause I was looking at that too. I don't have a motor again. I'll keep reiterating that, but it's like, I, I want to be able to fish docks and hardcover and grass, but if I could launch in the back of like Ocaquan and I could get the hardcover, but then I just, I feel kind of claustrophobic if I'm just locked. Cause I can't leave. Like if I wanted to get out of there. And so that's where I'm like really nervous, not practicing back there. Cause those docks can work, especially in that shad spawn. But yeah. if they're not working, you're pretty screwed on getting the hell out of there and getting somewhere else. Um, yep. and I don't know about the beach. I fish the beach a lot from a boat, but I've never, fi- the beach is, uh, for the people listening, that's down at the mouth of Aquaquan. I think people won there last year, but, I've just have never fished there a lot, honestly. Like, it's good. I'm not saying it's not good, but it's just I feel like the dead middle of the river is usually where the most fish are. And you, you can you can do good in general, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, Brandon. Yeah, you know, really appreciate you coming on today. Uh, is there anything that we could plug or give a shout out to? No, um, I don't have anybody sponsoring me or anything, so. It's just me. Uh, I thank my wife because she puts up with it and, <laughs> you know, helps fund it. Well, those checks definitely help when you keep winning yeah. like you are. Oh, yeah. Yep. Guys, as always, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Fishing DMV is sponsoring uh, NVKBA and VKAE this year. If you are the highest finishing Patreon supporter of of the show, you'll win an extra hundred dollars, just cold hard cash, just like a bonus bucks program. Like you have the Phoenix Big Bass thing. Like it's the same thing basically. So go support the show; it really helps us out. Uh, and then again, you know, if you have something that you want us to talk about on the show, reach out fishingdmv at gmail.com. We'll make sure we'll cover it. Like and subscribe, and we'll see. You
you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.